Good day, good people. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk to you about more on arrays. We covered some topics the last time and I'm sorry that the order of my tutorials is not always very clear to you maybe, but you can still watch it all in a row if you want to. I just figured that I would pick out the most important subjects first and now I will tell you some special functions that are important for a race. Let's get started. Well, first thing here, we have more options to loop through arrays and to search for different things. So for example, you can determine whether there is an index uh, with the name key in it. So you can search for something, you can search for elements, you can create an array of all indices, indices and of all values. Okay, enough talking, let's try and do it. So first thing, array key exists. Okay, let me copy that and put it right here. Okay, no, oh, I'm sorry, that was my old thing. So let us start here. Let's create an array with the name super. Why not? So super is an array. Remember to open the parentheses and then we put several items in it. So for example, we put two, five, eight, three, and the string test. All right. Always remember the semicolon. And now with this array key exists, we are searching for, like I said here, whether there is a certain key in it. So we are looking for a key, not for a value. Remember, these are values. They are all associated to keys. Okay. So for example, if we were looking for a certain key in our super array, we would go ahead. Here you put the array and there you put the key. So for example, zero. Okay, then you refresh and you don't get anything because this function, it doesn't return something. So if you want to know whether this works, you got to put print R, for example, and then you can echo out the result of this. And the echo is one. Okay, so what does it mean? Well, this function array key exists. It throws a boolean. Remember booleans zero means false. Oh, I'm sorry. Zero means false and one means true. So either something is set, then it's okay. Or something is not set, then it's false. So in this case, um, we obtain the one. So this means that the key zero exists. Now, where is the key zero? Well, obviously here, that's the first key and it's zero. Now you might wonder why, why is that important? Isn't the first key always zero? Yes, when you create an array like this and it's not associative, you have always the first key, okay? Named zero. But what if, for example, you work with an array a lot and you push something to it, you shift something, you unshift something, and then you work on the array and maybe there is no more thing that is has the key zero. We could do this, for example. Let's make an associative array, okay? So this gets the key one, this gets the key two, this gets the key four, just to make it a little more chaotic. And those two, we don't give anything. Okay. Now, if we refresh, well, there's nothing more to uh, echo out because there is no key zero. All right. So let's go ahead and print our array as well. And you will see, um, here we go. This is our array. So key one has the value two, key two has the value five, key four has the value eight, key five has the value three, and key six has the string test. So there is no key zero. And this is what you can check with that. Does the key in the array exist? Okay, next thing is to look for an element element. And no, it's not array element exists. The next one is in array. So you just put in array, then the parentheses, and first you look for the elements. So in this case, let's look for two. That is the first value here. And then 
we put the array super, okay? And again, if I echo that out, I get, uh, well, I should write it correctly, that might always help, okay? So I don't get anything, which is bad, because nothing means zero, but I forgot to print out the value because I told you the function itself doesn't print out anything, so you always have to print out, and here I get the one, which makes sense because the value two is here in the beginning. So one means, yes, you got it, okay? Perfect, so we could look for a key, we could look for an element, and now we can create an array of all indices, so of all keys of the value, all right? So let's just go ahead and create this. So for example, uh, what is it with Araris? Um, array, well, you already, array keys, you already have it. And then you put, well, obviously, you don't have to put anything here but you can print it out and before you print it out you should guess what you will see what you will see here oh it expects at least one parameter well i should have put the array name of the array in it obviously and now <laughs> next thing an array is to string conversion. We have to put print r because we can't print it out like a string because it is a an array. Here we go. So um, let me comment that out now. Finally, okay. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, yeah, well, we printed it out. Array keys. We have an array with all the keys. So. Remember, what keys do we have here? We have one, two, four, five, and six. Perfect, now they are here. So now the keys, one, two, four, five, and six, they become the values, all right? Before those were the keys, and now we created an array of the keys, so the keys became the value. This might come in handy for some things where you wanna, um, well, where you wanna show all the keys that exist in an array. Okay, this is when you would use this, all right? I don't have an actual idea for a practical example, but well, sometimes you might want to show all the keys that exist in an array. If there is a zero, for example, or if there is a one, then thus you can see it. And of course, with other functions, you can split this up into a string with explode, for example. All righty. Next thing, array values, let's not talk about this too much because it's pretty obvious what this does. Now we don't have an array of the keys, we have an array of all the values with the difference that now the keys are correct again. Well, correct in the sense that they start with zero, then one, then two, then three, then four, all right? So now we have the same array, but not with those um, mixed up keys, okay? So it got assigned to new keys. And this is, for example, if an array has been worked on a lot of times, then you might want to switch it up and have the old keys back again, okay? Then we have more sorting to do, okay? So with sort, for example, you can sort an array, like numerically. Okay, let me erase this so we have something proper to work with. Okay, let's just take numbers. So, like so, all right? Here, obviously this changes too. And now, so for example, we can go ahead and sort this array. All right, so let's do our sort, super, semicolon, What's doing it? Nothing. Obviously, it doesn't print out anything. So print R and, this, and don't forget the parentheses and print that out. We have one. So this means that now it is sorted. That's all there is. Okay, so it uh, returns a Boolean as well. So 
if you were to print out the actual thing, well now you gotta print out the array. So let's go ahead and print out super semicolon. Here we go. All right. So now remember our sort it uh, sorts re in reverse. So we start with nine, eight, five, three, and two. If you were to sort it numerically and regular, you have two, three, five, eight, and nine. Okay, that's the only different sort and reverse sort. Next thing we have a sort. So it sorts associative arrays and maintains key values. Okay, because you might sort it and then get different, um, well, different arrays. Okay, so now what did we do? We have three. Two, three, five, eight, and nine. So, but what if we had keys associated to it, like we had before? So this would be one, this would be five, this would be six, this would be 12, and this would be, with the key, 13. Same thing, because this sort, ignores the keys all right it just sorts the values and assigns it to the new keys which is zero one two three and so on so if we go ahead and tell it well do an a sort we still get the same order but this time the key values they are saved so we still have the same key values okay so we don't start with zero we start with one because that's the key of the value two and then the value three has the key 12 which is correct too okay so the difference between sort and a sort is that a sort um, takes to notice the key values okay same thing with a r sort it does the same thing in reverse and keeps the keys so pretty pretty logic here and k sort you can sort by keys all right so let's just switch this up here then we have a key sort if you will there we go so now you see we have key one key 5 6 12 13 well that's already the one that we have here so uh, nothing has changed we can switch that up if you want here we go now it's changed a little same well same thing okay same result because now it looks for the keys and it sorts the keys regardless of the values and obviously we have the same thing here okay r sort so r usually is the opposite to the thing that we talked about first and now they sort the keys in reverse okay there we go guys i hope this was helpful and i wish you a good day see you around